Hello and welcome to Journeys and Journals. It's always a privilege to go traveling. Traveling with the armchair travelers out there. Welcome to our history. And we're going to start with uh, red, white, and blue and just tell why we're so glad to be Americans. My guest today is probably um, as proud as any of the rest of us, and I'd like you to meet Brady Adams. Welcome back to oh, Journeys and Journals, and thanks for the map, oh, the calendar right. there that, this is my favorite. <laughs> Why the wall that came to Southern Oregon? Why? Well, you know, I've always had a, a, a deep love for America, and, and especially for its history, and and the positive influence really it's had on the world and the, and the freedoms that we enjoy. And those don't come without a price. And one of the steepest prices that we paid was during the, the Vietnam War. And while there was a lot of controversy about the war itself, I don't think there can be any controversy about honoring those that made sacrifices on our behalf. And the Vietnam Memorial Wall is a powerful way to, to be able to express that. And I've been fortunate in my life to be able to travel back to Washington, D.C. and actually see the wall itself. But many people in our area would never have had, or may never have that opportunity. And so a couple of years ago with the veteran groups, we got together and, and uh, helped them bring the uh, Vietnam Memorial Wall to here to Grants Pass. And it was one of the most powerful experiences, even in that locale uh, uh, that we've had. So. For me, it was so moving to uh -huh. see uh, the motorcycles all lined up there on the day uh, it was open and the flags flying high, oh, yeah. and that marvelous, marvelous little tent that was set mm -hmm. up as the um, chaplain, chapel. And you had replicas. You know, you dream big dreams, <laughs> and I'm willing to be on board and see that they happen, because this is the kind of thing we school kids here in Grants Pass Southern Oregon, Northern California need to have visuals. Yeah. When I was a kid, my folks picked us up one three o'clock in the morning, drove us to Salem so we could see the Freedom Train. Oh, I remember that, yeah. And we had to line up for hours yeah. to get to see replicas of our, Amer well, the same things, our American Constitution right. and, and so many wonderful things that filled me with Great joy. But you're not just into history. Right. You're into fun <laughs> and games too, Brady. Well, you know, sometimes you can combine them together. This year was the 230th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And as many people know, we brought uh, to the downtown area monuments that celebrated uh, one event from each decade for those 230th years. But along with that, we brought a replica of the Liberty Bell and also a, a, of the uh, Declaration of Independence and literally, there are thousands of people in Grants Pass that now have had the opportunity to be able to sign that replica. And, and that's a way to kind of make it a more personal, fun kind of event with the, the history itself. Now, this um, scroll, uh -huh. I signed it when I was in the bank. But it was downtown on the building. On the wing building. On the wing building. Yeah. How many stories <laughs> tall? It went, it, at that time, it was about, if I remember correctly, three stories. It's now an, at a facility that we call the Bear Hotel, which is kind of a fun place where we have a lot of the bears from the past uh, Bear Fest. We have where we're now warehousing the uh, memorials that were downtown, and, but also the great big constitution or the Declaration of Independence. And we open that up for the public to come through and take a look at it, and we give them the opportunity once again to sign it. This spring, we're initiating a program with the local elementary schools. And what we'll do is uh, this facility is set up where we can have a, a kind of a, a picnic area in one of the rooms. And we bring the little small teddy bear or bears in, and we call it a teddy bear picnic. And then when they're done with the picnic, then they get to walk through and look at the, the historical murals chance to ring the Liberty Bell, a chance to sign the Declaration of Independence, and a chance through the visual impact of being able to learn a little bit about our history of both the country and much of that also ties into the state. So it's another way to, to bring history to people in a fun experience. Well, I've got two little nephews and I, the three <laughs> of us would just love to come you, to your you, you need to just give me a call and I'd love to take you down. I, I always say it's more fun to be at the Bear Hotel than it is at the banks. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm always looking for a reason to be down there. You say bear. Why bears? I mean, there's a guy right here. <laughs> and folks, I'll tell you, if it weren't for Brady, we wouldn't have this guy here. <laughs> but I had to go down to the hospital yeah. and say, please, please, <laughs> may I take your bear in the parade? And they said, yes. So he rode in a tiny Volkswagen bug, <laughs> top down, with uh, Bob Heisler underneath it, holding him up, waving this little <laughs> paw, my husband Doug driving this, in the Christmas parade. Oh, that's great. Now, these guys are enormous. Oh, they are. How did you find them and what? Well, this was kind of an interesting one. These are uh, stuffed bears, and we use these as kind of the official mascot of the, of the Bear Fest itself. And what we found is that they're kind of fun if you've got fundraisers or uh, you're doing, an, say, a charity auction to make them available. And then just sometimes for people to use in special events. Where they actually came from, we were down visiting our grandson in San Diego and we, I went to the grocery store at Albertsons and they had a bunch of these available for sale. And, I, and when I looked at them, they were just so fun looking and, and so huge. I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if I, if I could get these back? So literally what I did is my wife had flown down or rid, rode down with me in the uh, car or in the SUV. And I drove back, but I, I, I had about eight of these <laughs> going all the way from San Diego up Interstate 5 all the way to Grants Pass. And then when we got home, uh, we called Albertsons. And that time their headquarters was over in Idaho. I don't know if it's still there. And they were kind enough to round up a whole truckload of them that we could buy, and, and we've got them st stored again, and, and we make them available for charitable donations to organizations. Well, I fell in love with the guy, <laughs> and, and not knowing just how I could get one for one function, I ended up finding this. Um, I go to a cancer rehab oh, yeah. um, once a week. We, and if you folks have cancer, or if you have any other infirmity, find the group where you can talk to people. Yeah. In fact, I know that Brady was <laughs> recently the speaker. What's that about? Where did you, where you were speaking at a special affinity group? Affinity group is a good description. Uh, I, uh, about four years ago, I, I was diagnosed with uh, Parkinson's disease. And the primary symptom I have now is a, a constant tremor in my left hand. And uh, this year, actually for the last two years, the, the support group for Parkinson's has been kind enough to ask me to come in and speak to them. And it's, it's kind of a, you know, I do a lot of public speaking, but it, it's kind of nice to be able to speak to a group of people who are, fa everybody faces challenges, but they, they happen to be facing some of the same challenges that I'm facing. And it's a nice way to be able to share with them, learn things from them, and maybe share with them some of the things that we're doing also. Well, both uh, Thelma and uh, two people were raving about the speech, and my brother went, and so I said, you know, this is something we all need to hear, because how you have faced this particular thing has been an encouragement to so many of us. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, it's always been my thought that everybody in life is going to have challenges as they go through life, and, and some of them are more difficult than others. And, you know, all of us would wish in some way that we wouldn't have that, but it is part of what life is about. And when I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, I uh, have always approached those types of challenges that what I'm about is the good things that are happening in my life, not the difficulties that I have to face. And that when I get up in the morning, I celebrate the fact that I've got another morning to be able to get up and, and do the best that I can in regards to that. And try not to have my life defined by the, by the, the dis, you know, it's, I'm not the person that has Parkinson's. I'm the guy that does bears or, <laughs> or other types of things. And, and I think if you do that, it helps you get through sometimes those challenging times on it. Well, the uh, year 2005 was my cancer year. Mm. And um, your statement, it's not going to define who I am. Right slipped from your disease into my cancer, uh -huh. and I've quoted you many times, <laughs> for it did not define who no. I was. It, uh, but it certainly has brought me together with a beautiful bunch of people and, yeah. and uh, weekly meetings, and we're just great. Now, I've got so many treasures here. I was out in Cave Junction, and this dear lady, by the name of um, Marilyn. She had a bit of history here of the old Napoleon. 
Now, I guess that's a town right around here. We just don't know it by <laughs> Napoleon anymore. Do you remember there was a French connection and there was a Southern connection to this, this part? I don't, you know, uh, frankly, I don't remember the uh, French connection. I know that there were a lot of, uh, especially uh, Southern connections, and during the Civil War, there, both in this area and in Jacksonville, there were a lot of uh, Southern sympathizers to the Confederacy at that point in time. And, but I, I, I'll be truthful, I had forgotten about the name Napoleon. Now that's, that's... Uh, Kirby? Kirby, wow. Yeah. Well, then there's this Jefferson Journals. Oh, yeah. And uh, Southern Oregon and Northern California felt neglected by Sacramento and Salem. So they said, let's make our own state. The state of Jefferson. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's kind of fun because it says, where livability is the greatest resource, the state of Je Jefferson. Yeah, and mm. Marilyn had these archives, and because she's watched uh -huh. me on Better Life Television, she contacted the station and said, would Bernie like to look at some of our treasures? Well, I'll tell you, we've been read. They even had newspaper ma out there that was, uh, I guess, ill-fated. Uh -huh. It started out, and but this she had about the storms. The, oh my God! The water was so high it was over the lower. Uh, cross member of the telephone poles. Oh my gosh, was that in 64 or the? It, as I recall it was. And 55 was bad too. Uh -huh. Yeah. And just lots of people have stories about the flood that they could tell. <laughs> and I hope they'll write them down. Yeah, well you, you know that I was uh, born in Vanport and if there was ever a flood story in Oregon, that's probably the definitive flood story of Vanport was a city that was created during World War II to house the uh, people who were working at the uh, uh, Swan Island shipyards building Liberty ships for the uh, uh, troops during the, the World War II uh, war. And it was between the Willamette River and, the, and where the Columbia comes together. And there was a, a wooden uh, dam that, that was used for a railroad trestle that went through that broke. And literally in one day you wiped that, that was at that time either the third or fourth largest city in Oregon and literally in that one day wiped that whole city off the, the face of the earth. So Oregon's had a long history of floods and... And, and uh, your family had the good sense to say, hop in the car, we're leaving? Uh, pretty close, yeah. They, uh, they did, but not with enough time. To, uh, I remember my uh, uh, family telling me that what they left the home with was the shirts off their back, their lives, and a cigarette lighter. And that was it. <laughs> so it was, no. fortunately, no one from our family was uh, hurt or injured uh, in that. But, but everything was gone. Oh, everything was gone. It, they were, the houses were, or they were mainly apartments, but they were all built on wood foundations. And so it was almost like a boat. When the water came through, it just took them up, swooshed them on down the river, and just took that whole community and destroyed it in a one day's period of time. In, uh, you've faced more than one crisis in your a life. A few, yeah. But again, but again, I think most people have had that same experience that you have very, uh, lar a large portion of my life is very good days, but you do have times when there are challenges and, and things that you're facing on that. Fortunately, probably for me on that one, I was so young that I, I, uh, I don't have really a absolute memory. I'm not sure if I'm remembering the event or remembering looking at pictures of it and thinking that I'm actually remembering the event itself. But Certainly my folks had a big challenge on that day. Yeah, incredible. Um, I say the cancer was only the fifth worst thing that ever happened to me <laughs> in my life. And uh, if you survived the other, or six, then the other five you survived, you know, this That's isn't right. all that bad. No, not bad at all. So. Um, it, you know, sure I lost my hair and wore funny wigs and this is real. Uh -huh. now. <laughs> it grows back. It does, there's, yeah. there's life after cancer. Yeah. Brady, if I um, pull out a few things, this sure. was this year. Well, that was really quite an honor. Uh, there was a group of individuals, uh, uh, many of them uh, the veterans in the community, that were kind enough to have a day of tribute to me and honored me at the uh, high school. Uh, it's one of those things that, you know, when you talk about a good day, that's about as good as a day gets. And uh, I was very honored to, to be able to be a part of that. I'm going to read from the Ecclesiastes 2.26, which is in here. 
For to a person who is good in his sight, he has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. Um, on your tombstone, could anything better be no, written? No, that's pretty darn good. I, I think that would work well for me. So. It's just so. in, incredible because um, we, each one, wonder what kind of footprints we'll leave in the sand. And we can't envision right. them. I mean, who would have guessed that I'd be wearing a red bracelet that was a gift from a cancer society yeah. survivor? And you're going to, anybody that asks me, I'll be glad to say, oh, you know, my friend from Hawaii gave me this. Wow. And it's just a constant reminder. Let's go back to Beer Fest and start sure. moving out 199. Uh -huh. This is um, a little bit about the artists who painted oh, yeah. these bears. And to my great joy, I got to meet um, the St Stiles family. Yeah. And Karen's Karen. Style. Yeah, Karen had, is a tremendous artist. Oh, and. Who would have known of her, her artwork if it hadn't been a chance to paint a bear? You know, it's, a, it's amazing. When, when I came up with the idea of the Bear Fest, I had the idea of the model itself, which is a, a fiberglass model of a, a life-size bear. <laughs> but I had no idea that the creative talent that we had in this community that could take their talent and create magic so that you ended up with what was originally this gray fiberglass bear that became then this beautiful thing that, that people young and old could share. And, and time and again, whenever we've done a project, I've, I've always been amazed at how the community has so much talent that is brought forth to really make those things. It's, it's not just the idea of having it, but it's the ability to have people who have that talent who can do bears or dog houses or uh, aliens or just all <laughs> kinds of different things that you have. And it's always been a great pleasure. Well, we met a lady over at uh, White City. My husband's a veteran going to the uh, domiciliary. I guess uh -huh. it has a new name over there, uh -huh. Camp White. But uh, she was so excited. She said, oh, we've been involved in this same thing. Yeah. And last time on Better Life Television, there's the big brown bear oh. sitting in at Dennis's uh, controls. Um, moving right along from bears, sure. the, the whole reason bears are so important to us here well, you know, I, I think part of it is that, that I have a, a natural love for animals, for all life, but for animals also. And a part of that is on the bears is that a part of it came about with, we, we, and I've been personally and through the business, very supportive of Wildlife Images, which is the rehabilitation center here in Grants Pass. And one of the main uh, areas where they've helped animals has been bears. And I, I'm just always fascinated by the, the character that a bear has, the, the fun that it brings to you when you're watching it. And it, it just is one of those things that I think there's just a natural uh, connection that people have when it comes to that particular species of wildlife. So. And the one that was just found downtown Grants Pass <laughs> on the street, <laughs> he, they thought, oh boy. They called wildlife images, uh -huh. picked him up, took him out there, doctored his foot. Yeah said, fine, he can go back right out into his... They, they do amazing work. They were kind enough one year, a, a couple of years ago, to allow me to be involved in the release of one of the bears that they had rehabilitated. They brought it in as a cub. Its mother had uh, unfortunately been killed. And we took it way out of the, uh, up on the Chetco River out in Curry County, way up in the hills up there. And I got to actually lift the cage up and saw the, the bear was uh, a little confused about what was happening. And, it went straight out of the cage right up to a tree and just went way up in the tree. And we sat there and watched for a while and drove off. But it was one of those things where you thought, you know, here this, this animal is going to get a chance to get back into the life that it was, it was supposed to live. And again, the work that they've done. But they're just such fun things to watch. And so. Well, and it was a bear that led to the to discovery of the Oregon, Oregon caves. caves. Which also that is going to be, there's another very interesting historical, or 2009, is the 150th anniversary of the state of Oregon becoming a state. It's the 100th anniversary of the Oregon case be, being declared a national monument. It happens to also be the 75th anniversary of, of uh, Evergreen Bank. And so we're gonna be doing some things to celebrate that in, in some of the uh, bear uh, 
uh, creations that we've got, including we'll be doing this that year, not just Grants Pass, but Cave Junction, Rogue River, and perhaps Brookings, and maybe Bandon also. So. Right, now you can take us over to the coast. Yeah. What do you know about history over there? Well, on the Oregon coast, we have offices over in Brookings and, Ban and Bandon, so I get a chance to go over there, not as frequently as I would like to, but again, they've got a rich history. You go into the, uh, the uh, Oh, not Bandon, but the little town that's just before you get to Bandon. Oh, uh, Port yeah, Orford. Port Orford. And, and you look at the history of the settlers, and that they have a rock called Battle Rock, where there were some settlers that were out on this rock that sits out in the uh, bay there, and, and uh, the adventures that they had. I mean, it's just got a rich history also. And again, when you're thinking about it in the context of bears, all of those countries or all of those pieces have bears associated with them too. Oh, absolutely. You know, I am so interested in um, that Oregon coast and the history, and I wish people who had personal history would write it down. Oh, that would be great. The one thing I'm looking for is where did these incendiary things land during World War Two? Well, there was also the there was one in the Klamath County area, and I know that not too long ago they had, had invited. Uh, it was either the pilot who had released it or a, a family member of that in a uh, ceremony that they had there. And I thought there was over in the Curry County in the Brookings area. Well, I have heard too. so many stories, and every yeah. kid knew that there was one down on M Street or down on <laughs> whatever. We don't really know all yeah. these stories. Doug's father was a, a forest ranger. Uh -huh. and. Some people really know these stories firsthand. They heard yeah. them from dad, and I wish they'd write them down like and that. send them to Better Life TV. We need to compile this thing. You know, that's very true. There, there's so much history that's not just on the national scale of things like the Declaration of Independence or uh, the Civil War or something like that. But really, the, the, the fabric of our, of our country and the greatness of the country is the individual histories that people have. And if more people would take time to be able to capture that, either write it down or even tape it on a tape recorder, so that, that the future generations will be able to have that rather than have it be lost. And it's, it's amazing how fast you can lose that history as uh, the older generation passes on and hasn't taken the time or had the opportunity to be able to do that. My chum, Bill Young, who you've seen here on Better Life Television, has passed away at 95 or 6 uh -huh. just recently. And he would tell stories after stories. <laughs> and once I bought a tape recorder and took it down, and he said, oh, Bernie, don't bother to tape it, you know. Uh -huh. But he's gone now. Yeah. And I'm so glad for the few stories because he was there when they built Camp White. Oh, my God. He was there when uh, they took the uh, building down to Anderson Ranch, the materials to build that down, uh -huh. down the river. They took the plate glass. Wow. And the bathtubs, he and Glenn Woolridge took them down the river. Um, yeah. That's a tough way to transfer. hard job, yeah. <laughs> they had the choice. Either you could take it on a mule, which <laughs> turned too many times to take glass. Wow. And, uh, but these stories, Brady, why don't you tell me some of your favorites about you discovering things because somebody comes into the bank and says, Hey, when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, there have been a lot of those types of things where one of the nice things about being involved in that type of activities is people share a lot with you, uh, stories and ideas and, and things. And a lot of times when people will, do, will share with me those stories, sometimes they'll give me ideas about things that we could be doing in our community. Uh, the example on this latest, latest one that we had down here with a historical thing, that actually came about talking with somebody. In, I had, had bought a Statue of Liberty and there was a fellow here in town that did the bear, remember, that had the Statue of Liberty? Mm -hmm. And I was talking to him about that and doing some research, and that's when I discovered that it was the 230th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, but it was the 130th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty. And so, again, when, when people take time to share that, it, a lot of good things can happen as a result of that. Oh, and it's fun. It's so yeah. much fun when it w my granddaughter was just two or three years old, and was 4th of July, and I said, would oh. you like to dress up like the statue? <laughs> so we put Grandpa's undershirt on it. Oh, that's great. And, uh, you know, the, you yeah. took aluminum foil and you made this <laughs> statue. Uh, it, it was so much fun. Oh, it is. And, and how I just, uh, 
if you're digging up old relics, folks, these wow. were right here on Better Life Television when they were putting oh footings God. in. They Four just horseshoe? dis right. Uh, I'd wow. recognize a horseshoe, but what in the world is this? It I don't looks know, like it al almost looks like something either a hook on something. And a, uh, but I was kind of thinking like a railroad tie where you'd hi hold the ties down, but I don't know. It's sure not a candy cane. But no. It's got <laughs> For Christmas, you could decorate it that way, maybe. You could. But you know, it's, it's interesting. That each thing like this has a story uh, associated with it, and it's fascinating sometimes if you can find out the history of those types of things. A blacksmith shop and a smithy and an yeah. anvil, and if okay. only you knew. This is the last time you were here, Brady. Oh, yeah. I look younger, younger then. Well, not. <laughs> I guess I'm getting, I'm getting we, a little more gray hair this time. I guess by. we all do. But it was fascinating because. Uh, the history these people bring. She came from Klamath Falls oh, I remember and, her. Yeah. and uh, told the story about Klamath had a new name just like Napoleon had. An, I mean, uh -huh. you know, these towns changed yeah. names. This is fascinating uh -huh. to find out where, who we are because of where we came where from. Where we've been, you bet. Where we've been. One last thought. Sure. What would you like to share with the well, you know, again, I guess the, the main thing that I'd like to share is that we do live in a great community, and one that is uh, its greatness in, is not in the climate, frankly, and it's not in the beauty of the area that we've got. It's in the, in the greatness of the people who live in this community, and it's a community that is given in so many different ways, whether it's building new hospitals or whether it's being involved in Bearfest or any of these other types of things. And I can't think of a better place in America to live, and, and I truly believe we do live in the best river town in America, not because of the river, but because of the people. And the people at it, my Thank thanks to you and yeah. thanks for sharing your story yeah. because we've all got something that we can't change, whether it's a yep, shaken hand or, or something else. <laughs> you just wave goodbye I, again. Yeah, I can wave goodbye. How's that? I do that pretty I, well now. <laughs> I'm Bernie Martin Beck saying thanks so much for tuning in. And thanks again, Brady, for being my guest.